Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we'll be looking at the image timeline. Now, this is another really cool visual I think you're going to enjoy that allows you to take date data that you have, or really a sequence of date data that you have, and be able to display it across a timeline. Now, it is a nice horizontal timeline that you can be able to display not only the data itself, but you can also take images that you might have of your data and be able to display those images across the timeline. On top of being able to display those images, you can also filter data from that timeline very easily. You'll see the nice little gray area that's shown on the, the timeline on the right-hand side that's showing US presidents. Well, that gray area that's right on below or in the background of the years is actually a way of filtering your data. It's called a date brush, and it allows you to very easily filter down a range of years or a range of values that you might have in your sequence of events. And so it allows you to very easily filter down, slide that filter that you create back and forth within the timeline, and makes it very easy to use and filter the rest of your report. You'll also see that you have the ability to, like I said, be able to bring in images that you might have from a URL and display those images within inside of your Power BI report. So it's made very easy to do that. Let's go ahead and walk you through an example of how you can use the image timeline. And an example I have set up that's going to be all based around Nobel Peace Prize winners. All right, so to get started, before we do anything with the image timeline, I'd like to bring in a few other visuals to really complement the report that we're going to build. So let's actually start with a map. You can see I have a list of countries. And so I'm going to bring in a map. And I'm going to bring that map into the bottom right-hand corner of my report. And I'm going to tell it that I want to see countries, and I want to see a count of all the people that have been awarded a Nobel Peace Prize by country. And so it's showing me, uh, again, the size of the bubble here representing the number of awards. So I can see it looks like United States has the most at 23. Looks like United Kingdom is behind that at 13. And there's several others scattered across the world. So I got a nice little map in here. I'd also like to bring a table in that's going to show more details about the award winners. So I'm going to bring this table into the bottom left. And what I'd like to see in this is I want to see the, let's say, the year of the award country of the person where they, who was awarded, the uh, name of the person that was awarded, the reason why they were awarded, the rationale, and let's bring in an image as well so we can see a picture of the people. So you can see it down here we have a nice table. We can look at this information. You'll notice if you've worked with the tables, you can actually have word wrapping in here automatically if I just make this column a little smaller. So I can make that column smaller to fit into our area down here in the bottom a little better, like so. And we maybe want to make some of these other ones smaller as well, so it fits in here nicely. All right, now you'll also notice that it looks like the image is coming through as just text. That's because we need to change the data category of our image column so that it understands that it is an image URL. So Power BI just thinks that's text by default. What we can do is we can select that image, go up to the modeling ribbon up top, change the data category to an image URL, and that way it will recognize it as an image, and you can see it renders it as an image within our table. Now the good news, what I'm going to show you here in a moment, is the image timeline actually doesn't even require you do that. If you have an image, all you have to do is place it into the image URL field, and it automatically detects it as an image without you having to set the data category. So the only reason I had to set the data category here is because I'm using a table. So let's get to actually using uh, at least one, maybe two custom visuals in this one. I might show you a second one that we've already done previously to really complement the report. Let's start, though, by bringing in the image timeline. So I'm going to go up to the Home ribbon. And you'll see underneath the custom visual section here that we can import from the store. You can also do that by hitting the ellipses and selecting from import from store here. So I'll select from store. And we're going to choose to search for image timeline. There's a bunch of timelines in here. So if you want to find it a little easier, make sure you search image timeline, not just timeline. We'll add this timeline to our visualizations pane here and hit OK. And let me clear this out here for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and just hit cancel on that. And uh, we'll go ahead and bring in our image timeline into our design surface here. And it'll make it take up the full width of our screen here. OK, now we have several things that you'll see inside the image timeline that we can use. One is the category. That's going to be basically what each event is that you want to display on your timeline. And so for us, I want to display each person that was awarded on the timeline. So we'll have the awarded to, that's the person that received the Nobel Peace Prize as the category. Then you'll have a sequence, which is either a date or it could be a numeric value maybe that you're trying to show in a, in a certain order. Uh, in this case, for us, that's going to be a year. So we want to see a sequence of all the years. And you can see that shown here. Then next, you have the image URL. So the image URL for us is just going to be image. I can select image here. 
and it brings in all of the images from our data set now into our report. You must also have an option here to bring in a measure as well. So if you had some kind of numeric measure that you want to display, or maybe even a text measure that you can create yourself, there, there are ways to do that. You can bring that measure in and display it as a tooltip where you would hover above and you would see the tooltip show below, in this case, my awarded to name. So I would have another value showing here. And then the measure also can control the size of the image. So the ones that are, have the higher value would make for a larger image. So you can actually have that flexibility as well. In my case, I don't really have a great scenario for using a measure. I don't have any measures in here that would make sense. But uh, imagine, let's say that I had a list of all of the, the states in the United States. And I had a measure in there for when they were brought into the United States. So maybe 1 through 50. And 50 was the one that was brought last into the United States, and 1 was the first state that was brought into the United States. And so what I could do is I, if I had that measure of 1 through 50, I could bring that into the measure section, and then it would make whatever the number is of 50, so whatever the last state in the United States was added, it would make that be the largest image out of all the ones that you see listed. And so you have some nice flexibility here. I, I like that feature. I just don't have a great use case for it in this data set. No true measure here. All right, the other thing I'd like to bring in here, just to supplement the report, not really anything to do with the timeline, I'm going to bring in another custom visual that has world flags in it. So I'm going to go uh, to import from store. And I'm going to search for flag, and I'll find this Enlighten World Flag Slicer. I'm going to go ahead and add that. It's done by another company. And I'm going to bring this visual into our design surface here. And all I have to do is assign the country name to it, and it brings back a flag for me. Now, there's going to be some. Oops, let me make sure I have it selected. There's going to be some countries that don't have flags. So things like a European. There's no European flag that's displayed here. And there's some other ones that aren't displayed either, but there's a, quite a few of them that are, and I can kind of use this as a method for being able to filter the rest of my report if I wanted to. So there's a couple ways I can interact with this now. I could use my map I have in the bottom to filter, so I can select United States or United Kingdom and just see the values that are within the United Kingdom. I could also use my state flags up top if I wanted to, so maybe perhaps I wanted to select United Kingdom up top here or United States up here. You can see it's going to filter the timeline based on that, which is nice. You can also use the timeline itself. So the timeline itself can also act as a filter. If I select an image, for example, so if I select this one, in this individual here, you can see it's going to filter the values I see below. So I'm not only am I only seeing this individual shown here and the rationale for why he was given the award, I can see the map is also filtered and the flag visual is also filtered. The other thing that's really interesting about the way this visual works is you have this nice time brush shown here on the top. This area in gray is actually something you can adjust. So if you only want to see perhaps from 1990 forward, I could select that range of dates and then it's only displaying from 1990 to current time all of the awardees displayed in the timeline. You could also take this and move it around. So if I wanted to, now that I filtered it, I can grab this, move it around and kind of get that range of values displayed. And say, for example, I only wanted 20 years, I might line it up with the year values I have here. And then I can kind of slide this back and forth to always look at just 20 years of awardees. So it's a nice way to be able to interact with the timeline slicer. Now, as far as the formatting, let me go ahead and make this take up the entirety here. Again, I'm going to unfilter this like so. As far as the formatting, though, there are quite a few things you can change in the formatting section here. If I go over to the format section, and you'll see timeline options. There's this one section devoted to it. So I said there's a lot. There's really not a lot of options, but that's okay. You don't really need a ton of options to edit and format the timeline slicer. Maybe some more will come in the future. But a couple things you can change. One, you can change the brush base color. That is the color of the section that we use as the, uh, the, data br the date brush here up top. So if you wanted to be able to change the color of that gray to something else, you could come up here and change that maybe perhaps to maybe a light yellow, something like that. You can ch certainly change that color to uh, whatever you want here in the brush base color. You can also change the event color. Now, right now, you're not seeing the event color because we're using images. But if for, perhaps I were to turn off the images for a moment, you can see this is the color of the events shown right here, Okay, when there's no images displayed. And I could, if I wanted to, actually change that color to something else. If I wanted it to be a purple or whatever I want, I could change the color of that here. The next thing you'll see here is the display date. How are you going to display the dates? You can change the display of the dates to any of these formats here. In my case, I actually just want to show the year, so I'm going to display the year here. And as you can see, it just displays the year, because all these are based on the awardees that occurred in a certain year. Now, you can also decide whether or not you want the measure. Remember I talked about the measure controlling the size of the image? You can control whether or not you want that to happen. 
Uh, by default, that feature is actually turned off. If you want, you can come in and turn that on, and then it'll resize all the images based on the measure that you have. Now, you might have noticed that it resized all of them anyways, even though I don't have a measure, but you'll notice it resized all of them to the same size. It makes them all small, and then if you have a measure, it'll resize the ones with the higher value to be a larger image size here. You'll also see if you happen to have any like HTTPS images, if they're in an HTTPS location, then you could also turn that feature on and it'll be able to read in images that are in a more secure location. So probably like an internal intranet or something like that, you might have to turn on that feature. That's really it. So it's a nice little visual, a lot of nice interaction. You can use the, the date brush slicer up to the top part. You could also select individuals, or in this case, UNICEF was a winner of the uh, Nobel Peace Prize at one point, and I can see the images for them or the flags for them, and I can see the map showing the location of them as well. So it's a nice little way to be able to visualize and show your, in this case, Nobel Peace Prize data, but really could be any data that you have with inside of a timeline for, for your examples as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a really cool visual. I appreciate the developer of it. I think they did a great job. And I uh, look forward to showing you our next visual in our next module. Take care.